Hey there, this is Zero. Welcome to another episode of my Vest of Loafing Let's Play series. Let's have some fun. Then let's check out that weird circus. As you enter the circus, the ticket booth clown shouts, Welcome to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus, I show, sir. In a loud and enthusiastic voice, enthusiastic voice, enter the circus. We we'll stroll into the circus. Actually, I guess it's more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs and find it almost entirely deserted. There aren't more than a dozen other patrons beside yourselves. There are a bunch of clowns around working at the booths and so on. More clowns and customers, which is a little unsettling, but at least the lines won't be very long. Got it. What is this note? The merry-go-round has a dirty canvas strap over it. Let's redesign. The sign says, condemned until further notice. We encourage anyone suffering from horse bites to consult a doctor. And this way to the egress. We can leave. There's the main stage. We can test our aim, maybe. This appears to be a shooting gallery type carnival game. Let's take a closer look. Well now, fella, I like to think I know a customer with a sharp eye and a quick hand when I see one. How would you like to test your skills against a game of dexterity? What's the game? Well, on the wall behind me, I've got a bunch of thick-skinned, underinflated balloons. For 10 meat, I loan you a cheap, inaccurate pistol and a pile of badly made ammunition. And your goal is to pop as many of those balloons as you can before the pistol stops working. That's an unusually honest sounding description. I've discovered making the challenge sound exactly as difficult as it is, is only makes people more determined to be the one who beats it. Uh, what's the price? A ticket to Barnaby Bob's stage show, which is otherwise sold out, so it's a rare catch, my friend. Then let's give it a shot. The clown hands you the cheap pistol and gashes at the balloons behind him. Good luck. Uh, we can only shoot backwards and cross out. You awkwardly fumble the ammo and tip the pistol and fire until it's empty, at which point you can't figure out how to get it back open to put more in. Wow, not a single balloon pop. I did tell you the rules, right? How popping the balloons is the actual goal of the game? Let's grumble a bit and try again. We don't have enough moxie. Yeah, for 10 meat. Let's shoot backwards again. Ah, grumble again. No chance. We can test our minds, but let's talk to the Zed boy first. I think he needs to go to the toilet. You okay, kid? Did you lose your parents? I lost my luck, bottle cap. You haven't seen it, have you, sir? No, but I'll keep an eye out. What's it look like? A shiny steel, it's on a little chain. Okay, I let you know if I find it. This appears to be some kind of card based carnival game, though it's not clear how it works from here. Let's take a closer look. Greetings and salutations, fella. This is a game designed to test your intelligence and capacity for abstract thought. And, uh, well, if you care to try your luck, far be it from me to obstruct you. What's the game? The simplest guessing game imaginable. I've got a standard deck of playing cards here. I show you all the faces and then I turn them back over and start picking cards. You guess what card I pick and you win. You don't shuffle them? No sir, if you can memorize a deck of cards that fast, more power to you. Or if you've got a touch of magic in you and want to try reading my mind, that's fine too. Just don't dig too deep, huh? Uh, what's the price? A ticket to, oh, it's the same ticket stage show. I think we'll need to visit it. Then let's give this a shot. Maybe we are more of the clever kind. You carefully scan the deck of cards as a clown spreads it out in front of you and then he turns them over with a sweeping flourish. Ready? Then give it a little. The clown starts picking cards out of the deck and holding them up with a to you. You don't manage to guess a single one of them. In fact, you can't even remember what the black thing that looks like a shovel is called. Dang it. Then give it a second shot. 
Yeah, yeah, what's the game? Another shot. Give it a little. Yeah, okay. No chance at this point. This appears to be one of those test your strength games where you have to use a big hammer to ring a bell. Let's take a closer look. Well, uh, what does he has for voice? Well, howdy there, fella. This here's games are challenge of strength, and I hope you don't mind me saying so, but you might prefer one of the other games. If you care to try your luck, though, I certainly won't stop you. Well, we have no skills at all, so we can try this one as well. Simple as can be, just take this big mallet here and hit the lever under that bell. Ring the bell and you win. What's the price? Why am I even asking? Let's give it a shot. Hit it not very hard. Wow, is there a word for when something is so unimpressive it actually becomes impressive as a result? Let's grumble a bit more. And a clown. There's a clown here selling rubber toy balloons. When he sees he has your attention, when he sees he has your attention, he smiles and waggles the balloons as at you enticingly. Talk to the clown. How did their fella interest ya in a toy balloon? Uh, how much are they? For you, just 30 meat. What colors do you have? Oh, ho, oh, well, just take a look. Um, red. They are all red. How do we make them float like that? Why, there's nothing to it. Heck, they all float round here. Ho ho! Of course. Let's take one. Anything else I can do for you? Uh, can you tell me more about your circus? Really, it's more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs. Ho ho! What would you like to know? What are your traveling plans? Haven't decided yet. That's why we sat down somewhere a bit more rural. Keep things relatively quiet while we scout around. Get the lay of the land and all. Ho ho! Where do you travel from? Was your previous stop interesting? Oh, not best ish. It was a little hole in the ground kind of a place. You wouldn't have heard of it. Ho ho! Why is everyone working here a clown? Oh, it's traditional. When the, what you call them, rodeo stop being put on, the rodeo clowns took other jobs at the circuses and carnivals. Over the years, it just became normal thing for carnies to be clowns. It's a community, you might say. Ho ho! Uh, who is this Barnaby Bob guy? Oh, the boss is a real famous showman. Though I'm not surprised you wouldn't have heard of him around here. Ho ho! Got an eye like a hawk and he's a real whiz with those nice of his. Don't miss the show, it's a real highlight of the carnival. Okay, zero around clown. Catch you later, like an alligator. That's wonder of. There's nothing interesting back that way. So I figure we are to. Uh, uh, not strong enough, too stupid, and have bad eyesight, so we can't do anything yet. That muscly clown doesn't seem to want you to go in there. Can we talk to him? Talk to him. The clown crosses his arms and grunts when you approach. The date show ain't till later. When? Later? Yeah, but when exactly? Later. Okay, jeez. So I guess we need a ticket. Then can we do anything here? This clown is presumably selling tickets to the side show. Let's talk to him. Howdy fella, can I interest you in the wondrous and mysterious delights of the side show? Hmm. What all do you have in there? Secrets, mysteries, things too weird and disturbing to be witnessed by the light of day. Freaks? Not just freaks. Gosh. Uh, how much does it cost? For you, 300 meat, oh boy. And for everyone else, 300 meat. Uh, whatever. Okay, I'm in. You won't be disappointed, and I'm. And in the event that you are disappointed, no refunds. He takes your meat and stamps your hand. You lose 300 meat. There you go. Enjoy. Thanks. Oh. I've got the money management uh, in the game as I have in real life. That's something. Oh, another clown. Can we talk to this one? 
Yeah, rubber toy balloons, talk to the clone. Audi fella, anything else I can do for you? Uh, weren't you on the other side of the midway just now? Oh, oh no, that's the other balloon guy. We just rest alike and use the same face paint. Did we fool you? He grins and gives you a big exaggerated wink. I see. Uh, can he tell us more about the circus? No, I will pick the last option and skip. Okay, see you around. Wander off. And there are some stores. Cotton Candy calls the clown behind his foot stand and then makes a few noise with a slight whistle. Come, try the just invented confectionery delight. Let's talk to the vendor. Sweet. Step right up, fella. Step up and try one of the world's newest candy sensations. What is it? Cotton Candy, the finest in several senses of the word, spun sugar created through a revolutionary new process. It's so light and sweet and fluffy, it's like eating butterfly dreams and kitten wishes. Fooeet! So it isn't actually made of cotton? What? No, cotton is in this indigestible, no matter how much chocolate you cover it with. Found it out the hard way, did you? Fooeet! How do you make it? He pets a metal box with a white funnel coming out of the top. This little machine right here can tell you how it works much as I'd like to break. It's a trade secret. You invented it? Not as such. Couple dentists down south were the first ones. Dentist, go figure. Fee you. But after hearing about I managed to figure out how it works. Made a few improvements with my design too. Now I'm really curious. Sorry, fella, these secrets in this box are for nobody's eyes but my own. Fiyut, I'll be happy to sell you some cotton candy dough. How much does it cost? Just 300 meat. Oh, yee. Oh, boy. Uh, never mind. Cold drinks. How do you uh, care to treat yourself to an ice cold soft drink? You said you're selling them in bottles? That's right. Got a new fangled crown cork bottle caps and all. Uh, what kinds uh, do you make the drinks yourself? How much are they? Uh, let's first ask, ask how much they are. 205 meat. 205? It's for the deposit on the bottle. Uh, okay, I'll take one. You lose 205 meat. Root beer, ginger beer, or salsa parilla. Uh, I don't know what the last thing is, so let's get that. Here you go, enjoy. You got an item, Sassar Parilla. Thanks. Does he have anything else to say? Uh, let's ask him if he makes them himself. If you're asking if we have a wagon dedicated to brewing and bottling three different kinds of sodas in our traveling carnival, no. We stock up as we pass through large towns. Ah. Then, no thanks, we don't have any more money for such kinds. And hot food. Red Hots calls a clown behind this food stand. Red Hots, food longs, two kinds of mustard. There are also a smi There's also a small sign that says, Lost and found. Talk to the vendor. The clown grins and gashes at the little charcoal grill behind him. Howdy sir, interest you in hot food long sausage? How much are they? 250 meat with your choice of condiments. Uh, what are the condiments? I got onions, pickle relish, three kinds mustard, and two kinds ketchup. Uh, <laughs> what kind of mustard? Brown, yellow, and blue. Blue? Blue mustard? Ah, looks like I'm all out of the blue. Sorry. Uh, two kinds of ketchup? Yep, got both ketchup and cat soup. Uh, no thanks. Then let's see. Let's talk to him again. What are they made of? What do you mean? They are pork. What else do you make a sausage of? How much are they? Ah, look. I thought he was gonna ask how much of pork they are. Uh, no things. Can we do anything else? Let's talk to him. I'd like to see the lost and found. Oh, sure thing. What you lose? Uh, well, nothing. A lucky bottle cap. The clown pulls a wooden box out from under the counter and looks inside. Appears here in luck. This one yours? He puts the box back. 
He puts the box on the counter for you to see and turns back to his grill for a moment. Let's look inside. A shiny bottle cap on a little metal chain. A folding pocket knife. A white silk handkerchief. A bottle of smelling salts. A Ooh, a lot of great options, but maybe we should help that little boy. Or get that uh, folding pocket knife, that's nice too, but... No, let's be nice. A shiny bottle cap on a little metal chain. Yep, that's the one. Thanks. No problem, sir. And let's leave. And buy some hot dog. Uh, if you're here. Yeah, yeah. Are they actually a foot long? <laughs> uh, 12 inches cause a lot of guys say that, but I'm just gonna stop you right there, seeing as there's ladies and children present. You want one or not? How much are they? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll take one. Thank you kindly, sir. Here you are. Help yourself to condim uh, condiments. You got an item? Clawn sausage. Uh, thanks. And where are the condiments? Uh, no things. Then let's talk to that boy and give him his item back. When I find him, uh, here he yeah, is. Talk to him. Hey, sir, did you find my lucky bottle cap? Is it this one? That's it. Thank you, sir. No problem, kid. Ah, we did the right thing. Oh, he's smiling. That's nice. And. Does Alice have something to say? Sure a lot of clowns around here. I guess that ain't all that surprising. Want a balloon? Not if a clown touched it. Uh, <laughs> do it yourself. And then let's visit the sideshow. The sideshow tent is fairly large and packed with weird things to look at. Like all good sideshows are. A few lanterns are hanging from the ceiling. Casting flickering shadows around and making everything look even more eerie. A clown is hanging out in here, presumably to keep an eye on the exhibits. He grins and nods as you enter. Come on in, take your time, have a good luck around, just remember no touching. Then let's look around. Ooh, these are weird. Are those Fabergé eggs or how they are called? Here are mirrors and I will look fat in each of them. This looks to be one of those weird bent mirrors that make you look all crazy, as if there wasn't enough crazy looking stuff around here already. Let's look at ourselves. Gah! This mirror somehow shows you what you'd look like in a clown makeup. Bloodshot eyes stare back at you from a pasty white face painted with an odd pattern of red triangles. In the flickering lantern light, it almost looks like he winks at you. Brrr. Another mirror. Look at yourself. The mirror makes you look really stretched out and thin. Your limbs twist and writhe like snakes as you move around. It's a bit unsettling and your muzzle ash is a little... Your muzzle age a little sympathetically. And the last mirror. Here for reflection, the mirror is short and scratched looking, folded up like an accordion. You spend a moment moving back and forth in front of the mirror, seeing how the image changes. It's kind of amusing. Well, at least that. And can you talk to him? Howdy fella, welcome to the sideshow. Thanks, what's to see in here? Well, down to the left we have our collection of spooky wrapped mirrors. Right here we have exhibits of clown eggs and pickled punks. And further down the right is our freak show. Feel free to explore and I'll be here if you got any questions. Ask a question. I have a question. Uh, what's with those uh, weird mirrors? Ain't they a riot? That's what they call an optical illusion as I understand it. Has to do with the way the light reflects off of them. I'm 100% sure that what I saw can't be explained by the reflection of light. <laughs> Not telling what you might see if you look long, uh, too long. Uh huh. And let's check out those eggs. These shelves are displaying a large collection of strangely painted eggs. Let's have a closer look. You see several shelves full of white eggs, each one painted with a unique pattern of colorful shapes. A small placard pinned to one of the shelves says, 
Clown X. In the circus community, it is traditional for each clown to paint their chosen makeup pattern onto an eggshell. These clown eggs are achieved for future reference to ensure that no one chooses a pattern that has already been used. It is considered extremely taboo to view another clown's face. These must be the eggs for the clowns that work in the circus. You recognize a few of them, like the clown here in the sideshow tent and the ticket seller clown out front. Say, wait a minute. Here's the egg for that balloon selling clown. Didn't he tell you there's another guy wearing the same makeup? According to the sign, that seems unlikely. Uh, let's inspect them more closely. Hey, step back, please. No touching. Sorry, then let's leave the shelf. And what is this? These shelves are filled with jars, and the jars are filled with things. Real, uh, real weird looking things. Then let's look closer. You lean in a little closer to inspect the jars. They mostly contain malformed and or mutated animals, pickled in form aldehyde. A three-headed kitten, some kind of ferret or weasel with eight legs, a twisted Möbius loop of snake without a head or tail, weird, crazy stuff. One shelf seems devoted to huge gross pale grubs like fat featureless white worms the size of a sweet potato. The one on the end is larger than the others and has shiny black eyes. Someone has painted its face in an apparent parody of clown makeup. Yuck. Let's take a closer look. The pasty white face has been painted. Uh, the pasty white face has been painted with a little brood, uh, blue triangles over and under the eyes. The creature has a long thin slash of a mouth as well, and the area around it has been painted with bright red lipstick. The black eyes flash red as the thing suddenly trashes in its jar, spinning to face you and stretching its mouth open, revealing rows of yellow shark teeth. You stumble back with a cry of shock. Yeah! Ah ha Got you pretty good there, buddy. What, 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 in, the hell, uh, what in the world is that? Hey, it ain't a real critter. It's made of rubber and clay and doll part and such. Got an electro magnet under the shelf to move it with. He takes a little push button gizmo out of his pocket to show you. Shut us in your face, you about jumped right out your boots. <laughs> uh. Can we ask him something else? Uh, ask a question about these uh, eggs. That's a, tra a traditional clown thing. There's Plucker there next to him that explains in detail. Don't get too close, please. They're fragile. Uh, fragile. Okay. And another question. What are we going to ask? What are these things in the jars? That's what we in the business call pickled punks. A menagerie of strange and twisted creatures such as you never before seen the like. Captured and preserved and on display for your entertainment and edification. That's how the boss says it. Are they real? As real as they come. Haha. <laughs> hmm. Uh, last question. Uh, these uh, people. You mean the freaks? Ain't they a scream? The one with the giant eyeball head is my favorite. Nice quiet fellow. Uh -huh. If you have questions about the other two, feel free to ask them personally. I wouldn't want to be telling tales at the school. Since the eye guy can talk though, you can ask me about him if you want. Okay, what can you tell me about him? Not much, I'm afraid, to be honest. He joined us oh, about a year ago, maybe a little less. Uh, where did he come from? No idea, weird ain't it. You'd think fella looks like that, you'd read about him in all the papers, right? Well, yeah, it sure is mysterious. How did he get like that? Couldn't tell ya. I bet you've got a theory, at least. Ha, huh, well, maybe he saw something new uh, no human fella should ever see. Uh, okay, bye. This is the guy with the eyeball. This guy is startling sight, even for a circus show. His entire head is one enormous eyeball. As you look him over, he stares back at you. Not that he's got much choice. Let's talk to him. Yeah, hello there, I'm Hoss. Uh, how is it going? Uh, can you talk? Guess not. Uh, take a closer look at him. You move a little to the side and lean over the rope to get a closer look at the guy. He 
He's basically just what he seems to be at first glance. A guy with a giant eyeball for a head. You do notice two things though. First, he has an odd lump at the well, what you would call the base of his skull if he had one. A sort of crumpled fleshy mass the side of a fist. With a squint and some imagination, it almost looks like the crushed and shriveled vestigial remains of a human head. The second thing you notice is that his ankles are locked to the legs of his stool and the legs of the stool are bolted to the floor. Uh, do you blink? Or wink, I guess? I guess not. Uh, so the circus geek. His hand slowly curled into fist and the knuckles turn white with tension. I see, uh, understand, I mean. Okay, well, see you around. <clears throat> Sorry. This man is neatly dressed, though his suit is a bit threadbare and out of fashion. He's smoking a pipe and leafing through a magazine. When you stop to look at him, he nods amicably. Talk to him. Hello there, welcome to the sideshow. My name is Douglas. Hi, I'm Hoss. Delighted to meet you. Uh, so, uh, well? Are you perhaps trying to think of a polite way to ask what's wrong with me? Yeah, you got me. Don't worry, Hoss. I am in a sideshow after all. It is an obvious and natural question. Wait a minute. You said that last bit without moving your lips. Are you a ventriloquist? Not at all. Allow me to demonstrate. He stands up and turns around. His back is the same as his front. That is, his suit has been tailored with two front sides and he has another face on the back of his head, which is hair cut and parted appropriately. Ta-da! As he sits back down, he knees and other joints crack and pop loudly as they reverse themselves. Douglas winces slightly, though certainly not as much as you expect. What in the... Surprising, yes? A bit, yeah. How is that even possible? Douglas shrugs and holds his pipe up to the now back of his head so his other face can take a puff. Are you... what's the phrase? Siamese twins? Not exactly. It's difficult to describe, I'm afraid. Two minds in one body with two faces? It would be closer to the truth to say two instances of the same mind. But as you say, two faces. You are right. Uh, that doesn't make any sense at all. The other face shackles and Douglas holds his magazine behind his back. It took some getting it took some getting used to, that much is quite certain. Were you born like this? I, I would rather not discuss how I came to be this way, if you don't mind. Okay, sorry. No apology necessary. Your knees must be a wreck. Surgery was necessary to permit them to bend in both directions. It sounds worse than it feels, I assure you. Uh, why are you in a sideshow? With a regular suit and haircut, you could easily pass for normal. I have a contract. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot the clown making a gesture, but you didn't catch what it was. Douglas clears his throat. Plus, well, it's quite the life, you know. Free room and board travel the world, and you meet such interesting people. Talk to you later, Douglas. Okay, seems like a very, very sketchy circus. Well, we already knew that, didn't we? There's a lady here with her head sticking out of a hole in a large metal box. She nods politely at you. Let's talk to her. Yeah, hello? Hello there, and hello there, enjoying the carnival? Well, it's interesting. She smiles slightly. Yes, I'm sure it is. Uh, can I ask her a question? Certainly. Uh, what's your name? I'm Janet, and you? I'm Hoss. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Hoss. Uh, uh, why are you in a box? That's a rather personal question, isn't it? Oh, sorry. I'm only teasing, dear. Would you like to see inside? Uh, sure. Janet whistles to signal the clown and he moves over. He unlocks the door on the front of the box and throws it open with a theatrical flourish. Inside, instead of Janet's body, you see a tangled, complicated assortment of glass tubes and pipes, ticking clockwork gears and pumps. 
Liquids of various colors, mostly red, mostly red slush fruited tubes, are large bellows near the top inflates, then begins to slowly deflate. What do you think? Uh, it's some kind of trick, right? You are folded up behind a mirror in there or something? No trick. The clown chuckles and walks around the back of the box. He opens a hatch and waves at you through it, then saunters back to his place by the shelves. Uh, it's horrifying or it's amazing. Well, I would say it's horrifying, but don't uh, be need to be nice or I will feel bad. Uh, that's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. Well, I take it as a compliment. It's certainly educational, I imagine. The larger tank on the left is my stomach, if you'd like to see what I had for lunch today. Uh, yeah, well, what does she had for lunch? You watch the various liquid slosh around in their tanks and pipes for a minute. Be as gross, but it's indeed educational. You got a perk, anatomical learning. Uh, how did this happen? Were you in some kind of terrible accident? I'm sorry, but I can't talk, uh, talk about that. Of course, sorry, it must be pi a painful memory. Her calmly composed face creases into a very slight grimace as she so shoots a sidelong glance at the clown. Yes. Well, it was nice to meet you. Good luck, Hoss. Leave. Ooh, now we can see it. This seems horrifying. This whole place is weird and dated experiments on those people. That's that's something. We got items. Well, then let's check them out. We got clown sausage, a large pork sausage with your choice with your choice of condiments. Except he was all out of the blue mustard. This increases our moxie by three for the rest of the day, so that's kind of coastful. And the Sasha Paria. You were never sure how to spell this and you still aren't. Yeah, I am not sure how to pronounce it either. And a balloon. It's red. Cell value one meat. And nothing else new. So, then I figure we can't do anything in here except for uh, leave for now. And maybe choose another location. Maybe go to this lazier dude ranch. Here at least I feel kind of safe. So, this was it for this episode. I stream these sessions live on Twitch as well and then upload them here on YouTube as Let's Play episodes. So maybe check out my Twitch if you want a more personal experience and see the face I make when I find something funny. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching and auf Wiedersehen.